Hey everyone, welcome back to another week on Kazon Radio's Know Your Legends in Frequent Affairs. My name is Matt Jarbo, and I'll be your host through this tale of craziness, uh, uh, true story craziness too. Uh, this week we're going to be discussing Annalise Michelle. She is a German Catholic woman who was said to be possessed by demons and subsequently underwent exorcism. This case has been labeled uh, by some of the misidentifications of mental illness, negligence, abuse, and religious hysteria. Uh, three movies, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, Requiem, and the Asylum film Annalise Michelle, The Exorcist Tapes, are loosely based on Michelle's story. Uh, her early life is uh, she was born in September 21st, 1952 in Bavaria, uh, West Germany, to a strict Catholic family. Uh, when she was 16, she suffered a severe convulsion and was diagnosed as having epilepsy. Soon she began hallucinating while praying. In 1973, she suffered from depression and began to hear voices telling her that she was damned and she would rot in hell. Psychiatric treatment. Her treatment in an unnamed psychiatric hospital did not improve Michelle's health. Moreover, her depression began to deepen. She grew increasingly frustrated with medical intervention as it did not help. Long-term medical treatment proved unsuccessful. Her condition, including her depression, worsened with time. A devout Catholic, Michelle began to attribute her condition to demonic possession. Michelle became intolerant of sacred places and objects such as a crucifix, which she had attributed to her own demonic possession. Throughout the course of the religious rites Michelle underwent, she was prescribed an antipsychotic drug, which she may not have taken. In June 1970, Michelle suffered a third seizure at the psychiatric hospital where she had been staying and was prescribed anticonvulsants for the first time. The name of the drug she was prescribed is not known. Gambitrol, mentioned in the movie loosely based on her story, is a fictional drug. The drug did not bring any immediate alleviation to Michelle's symptoms. She also continued talking about what she called devil faces, seen at various times of the day. Michelle became convinced that conventional medicines were of no help. Growing increasingly adamant that her illness was part of a spiritual kind, she appealed to the Catholic Church to perform an exorcism on her. That same month, she was prescribed another drug, Aolept, which is used in the treatment of various psychosis, including schizophrenia and disturbed behavior. In November 1973, she started her treatment with Tegretrol, an anti-seizure drug and mood stabilizer. Michelle took this medicine frequently until shortly before her death. Exorcism and Death Annalise went on a pilgrimage to San Diamano with a good friend of her family, Thea Hine, who regularly organized such pilgrimage to holy places. Not officially recognized by the church because Annalise was unable to walk past a crucifix and refused to drink the water of a holy spring, her escort concluded that she was suffering from demonic possession. Both Annalise and her family became convinced she was possessed and consulted several priests asking for an exorcism. The priest declined, recommended the continuation of medical treatment, and informed the family that exorcisms required the bishop's permission. Eventually, in the nearby town, they came across Vicar Ernst Alt, who, after seeing Annalise, declared she didn't look like an epileptic and that he didn't see her having seizures. He believed she was suffering from demonic possession. Alt urged the bishop to allow an exorcism. In September 1975, Bishop Josef Strangel granted Father Renz permission to exercise according to the Rituale Romanum of 1614, but ordered total secrecy. Renz performed the first session on September 24th. Once convinced of her possession, Annalise, her parents, and the exorcists stopped seeking medical treatment and put their faith solely in the hands of the exorcism rites. 67 exorcism sessions, one or two each week, lasting up to four hours, were performed over about 10 months, in 1975 and 1976. At some point, Michelle began talking increasingly about dying to atone for the wayward youth of the day and the apostate priests of the modern church, and she refused to eat. At her own request, doctors were no longer being consulted. On July 1st, 1976, Annalise died in her sleep. The autopsy report suggested that the cause of death was malnutrition and dehydration from almost a year of semi-starvation while the rites of the exorcism were performed. She weighed 68 pounds. Prosecution. After an investigation, the state prosecutor maintained that Michelle's death could have been prevented even one week before she died. In 1976, the state charged Annalise's parents and the priests Father Ernst Alt and Father Arnold Renz with neglectful homicide. During the case, Annalise's body was exhumed and tapes were played to the court of the exorcisms over the 11 months leading to her death. The parents were defended by Eric Schmidt-Leichner, 
The state asked that no involved parties be jailed and said recommended sentence for priests were fine. The prosecution asked that the parents be recused from punishment as they had suffered enough. Trial and courtroom charges. The trial started on March 30th, 1978 in the district court and drew intense interest. Before the court, the doctors claimed the woman was not possessed, although Dr. Richard Roth, who was asked for medical help by Father Alt, allegedly said after the exorcism he witnessed on May 30th, 1976, that there is no injection against the devil, Annalise. The priests were defended by lawyers retained by the church, and the parents were defended by Eric Schmidt-Leichner. Schmidt-Leichner claimed that the exorcism was legal and that the German constitution protected citizens in the unrestricted exercise of their religious beliefs. The defense played tapes recorded at the exorcism sessions, sometimes featuring what claimed to be demonic arguing, as proof that Michelle was indeed possessed. Both priests presented their deeply held conviction that she was possessed and that she was finally freed by exorcism, just before she died. Ultimately, the accused were found guilty of manslaughter resulting from negligence and were sentenced to six months in jail, which was later suspended, and three years of probation. It was far lighter sentence than anticipated, but it was more than demanded by the prosecution who had asked the priests only be fined and that the parents be found guilty but not punished. During the trial, the major lingering issue were related to the church itself. A not guilty verdict could be seen as opening the gate for more exorcism attempts and possibly unfortunate outcomes, but for the most part, experienced observers believe that the effect would be the opposite, that merely bringing charges of negligent homicide against priests and parents could provoke changes and more caution in carrying out exorcisms. Exhumation before the trial, the parents asked the authorities for permission to exhume the remains of their daughter. The request came after receiving a message from a Carmelite nun from the district of Algo in southern Bavaria. The nun told the parents that she had a vision of their daughter's still intact body and that the vision authenticated by the supernatural character of the daughter's cases. The official reason presented by the parents to authorities was that Michelle had been buried in undue hurry in a cheap coffin. Almost two years after the burial, on February 25, 1978, her remains were replaced in a new oak coffin lined with tin. The official reports to date, undisputed by any authority, state that the body bore the signs of consistent deterioration. The accused exorcists were discouraged from seeking the remains of Michelle. Father Arnold Reince later stated he had been prevented from entering the mortuary. So this is like the first big exorcism case. This is like, you know, this is kind of like... Uh, you know, um, Ed Gein was like the basis for a lot of different theories and a lot of different movies and characters based on this stuff. And and of course, like, you know, the exorcism of Emily Rose uh, that, you know, stars Jennifer Carpenter um, and uh, and and Requiem, which uh, which I haven't seen. And of course, the uh, Asylum film who really watches the Asylum films. Um, it's just an interesting case because it's like, was this woman possessed? Was she just crazy? The way that the way that this article presents it is that she was crazy, but there's a lot of people out there that believe she might have been possessed. Um, of course, if I, I don't have access to the audio recording, so I can't play this here for you. Uh, but I'm curious, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Annalise Michelle? Um, the 21 or the 24 year old girl who, who went crazy and died. I mean, this it, it kind of seems similar. It's like the malnutrition and, and they're holding her and she just deteriorated worse and she was on conflicting medications and um, then it went off her medications. It just seems to make sense like that, that this is how things would go. Uh, I, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Let me know. Um, you guys can find us at KZOMRadio.com. Um, we're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. We're on YouTube. We're all over the web. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next week, uh, next Monday, for another episode of Know Your Legends in Frequent Affairs. My name is Matt Jarbo. You can find me on Twitter at Kazon Radio uh, or at M Jarbo. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good one. Do you love Kazon Radio? Listen to more shows like The Survivalist, Know Your Legends, and Who Win in a Fight on KazonRadio.com today.